Let's take a quick look at some very basic facts about the history of trade and the history of tariffs. Here are some basic numbers on the growth in world trade using $2,011 as the metric. One thing I find striking is that when you look at the 1950s and 1960s, just how low trade volume is compared to contemporary standards. You get the beginnings of a takeoff in the 1970s, continuing rises throughout the 80s, and then in the 1990s, this figure really moves upward extremely rapidly. Some of that comes from growth in the developing economies, but also a lot of it comes from wealthier nations trading more with each other. You find a significant dip downwards, larger than perhaps had been expected in the Great Recession of 2008, though afterwards you can see trade resuming an upward course. Trade is going up for a few reasons. One is that nations on average are becoming wealthier. Another is that transportation costs are falling, and that makes trade easier. And a final factor, which we'll look at more in a moment, is that tariffs and barriers to trade overall have been falling. Coming from an international sample of countries, here's data on average tariff on imports and moving pretty much in lockstep, a trade restrictiveness index. It's interesting when you look at the late 19th century that tariffs are really relatively high. One reason for this is that at that time, countries in general did not have income taxes, and tariffs were used as a major source of funding for governments. Starting in the early 20th century, there's a significant dip in tariffs, lasting through the 1920s, and then we find a decade starting in the 20s and also the onset of the Great Depression, where tariff rates grow significantly higher, and there's a partial breakdown in world trade starting in the 1930s, but then in the post-war era we can see tariffs and trade restrictions on a strongly downward march, and there's a significant move toward freer trade. Here's another trade index based on tariff rates from 35 countries. One thing you can see here is a beginning of trade wars in the 1920s, you also see the collapse of world trade during the Great Depression in the 1930s, that's partly from tariffs, but also in large part due to the Depression itself. If you look at the post-war era, we see a much lower level of tariff barriers, and of course that level is falling over time. And note, of course, that this is very good for developing economies and economic growth. If you want to try to grow your economy by exporting to wealthier nations, well, since the end of World War II, you have been operating in an era where there is a lot of trade, growing trade, and falling tariff rates. All of this has been very good for developing nations. Here's quite a striking graph. It's a look at how inefficient are the tariffs that we're using, and this is for the United States only. But you can see in earlier periods of time, say the late 19th century, Tariffs in economic terms are extremely inefficient, and they're distorting economic activity quite a bit. Go back to the point that tariff revenue was needed to fund the government at all, because there was no income tax. In that case, governments didn't have the luxury of trying to find efficient tariffs, they just needed tariffs which would raise money. When you look at the post-war era and you judge the efficiency of tariffs, rather than the inefficiency being up here, or being here, or being up here, we find inefficiency is plummeting, and it's down at this level from about 1950 onwards. So it's not just that the world has lower tariffs, but it has tariffs which are better thought out or less inefficient than in times past. To read more on this topic, you could go to a very good paper by Michael Clemens and Jeffrey Williamson. That paper is also the source for some of these graphs. And you could go to the World Trade Organization website and read their annual reports for updates on what is going on with trade and tariffs.